All right, Chris. All right, Chris in the building. My man. <laughs> Hey, first thing first, bro, I want to appreciate the uh, support of the channel. Thank you very much, man. I mean, I always said that if my channel provides value or entertainment or anything of that matter to at least one person, I did my job, bro. So. Oh, absolutely. That's really right. As I said, when I uh, contacted you, I said, you know, you know, I watched you on YouTube, and I was like, oh. you know, I was coming up to Pennsylvania the other day, and I was like, you know, man, I feel like this is a lot of men, but the problem is, is when you put YouTube on, you kind of keep that up on your phone, or, mm-hmm. or you know, play it, right? So I'm like, what's this cat had a podcast? So I went on my my Apple podcast, and like, boom, there you were. So I'm like, this is awesome. I get to, I get to listen to all your shows, and still keep my, uh, you know, my ELD, and my math stuff all up on my phones and everything, and, uh, and this is easy, like, over the 10, 12 hours coming back home and uh wow. boy, I laughed so hard for some of the stuff going on down there. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right, hey, are you talking to me on a uh speakerphone or are you talking to me through your rig uh through the piece? So, so I'm on my cell phone, right up to my ear. Does uh, it sound okay or oh, okay, it just sounds it just sounds uh kind of uh like it sounds like you got me on the speakerphone or something like that. Nope, nope, you're, uh, I'm speaking into my phone. All right, awesome, awesome. So, bro, let's just jump right into it, man. Yo, so you decided to reach out to Seafood Express after listening to the conversation that I had with one of their recruiters. Well, actually, it kind of didn't happen that way. What happened was uh, I saw they had an ad, mm-hmm. and I replied to it. Now, they're, I live in the, you know, Atlantic Canada, so they're not too far away. They're both an hour and a half drive because it's a different province. And uh, they got back to me that same day. Mm-hmm. And they sent me, uh, they said, you know, we're interested. And uh, this was just before Christmas. So we talked and then they said, okay, well, uh, you know, I mean, there was a lot going on. Like, they're located in Prince Edward Island and that place was locked down heavy because of COVID. Like, you know, even the, when you drive over the bridge on that island, you got to go in and you like before you even get out of your car they give you a COVID test and then you gotta mm. do a quarantine period and all this stuff. Mm. So I talked to their HR, that lady that you're talking to, she's very nice. And uh, we scheduled it for after the New Year's, right? So they said, Okay, you gotta come up for orientation. Now I'm a relatively new driver. Like I had just got my C D I went to trucking school like on my own dime mm. and uh, you know, I've been working for another cat and doing some other kind of work but they, you know, I said, look, I'm a new driver. They're like, we don't care. You know, we're good with that. We we have our own little program. Okay. And they said, come up there in the new year and do an orientation. And I said, uh, which is a little different than what you talked to you because you got more experience. But she said, you know, it'll be like, she goes, you stay for a couple of weeks. We'll pay for your motel and everything. I said, okay, okay. And we'll pay you for your orientation. She said, okay, cool. So after that, I, you know, during the Christmas break, I started doing my due diligence on them. And, uh, you know, I, like, Googled them, I YouTube them and all that. And they have a bunch of little videos they put up uh, how to do a pre-trip. Now, they're a, a reefer-only company. They haul food. They haul, like, you know, Prince Edward Island is famous for its potatoes. And they do a lot of French fry hauling and all kinds of stuff. And they got a bunch of little videos from their, like, head of compliance guy showing how to do a proper pre-trip, showing how to do run the reefer, showing how to pre-trip the reefer and all this stuff. And because of, like, entering their name into the, you know, the YouTube algorithm, that's how I first found you. I'd never heard of you before. And I was like, okay. So I, I checked that out. And I was like, wow, this guy is cool, man. Because, you know, like, there ain't a lot of really cool, you know, like, I watched a lot of, when I was getting ready to go to do my CDL training and all that, I was watching, like, a lot of trucker vlogs on YouTube and, like, getting, you know, my head right about it and kind of learning things and stuff. And, uh. I was like, wow, this is diff- this is different. This is interesting, right? So I really started listening to more of your stuff. So when I got up to orientation, you know, after a couple of days, I thought to myself, should I like tell these guys that they were on lockdown? Because I don't. She had no idea at all. She just thought you were some cat calling up looking for a job, and that's the way it was. They had no idea. Like I totally opened their eyes. So I I thought I decided to tell them, and uh, they watched it. They didn't class. <laughs> and they were like, whoa. <laughs> They're like, uh, good on you, 
man for like bring her set doing her attention to this guy, right? So you say you 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 played it while they, you you played it in class and they was blown away by it. They they played it in class. They put it right up on the screen and uh, they were like, "Whoa, right?" But I was like, you know, the guy wasn't like screwing you around. He's just doing his thing. You know, he's he's actually providing a really good service to drivers because he's doing a lot of legwork for people, just like you say, right? Right. And they were kind of like, "Whoa," you know, but they had no idea. Uh, so, but the thing is, like our class, this is kind of where we get into it. Uh, there was just me and one other guy. And uh, you got to understand, it's, it's a different game over here in Canada. There's no mega carriers that uh, do, like, will get you your CDL. You have to kind of either go to a school or maybe your daddy taught you how to drive a truck or something like that. But there's there's no Swift and there's no, you know, CR England and all that that's going to bring you in. Uh and give you your CDL in like 14 days or whatever and put you right on the road. Like you, you got to show up, you got to already kind of have your CDL and then they're going to, you know, maybe depending on your experience, they're going to, you know, run you through some more stuff. So that's what these guys start off with. Let me, let me ask you, there. let me, let me ask you a question right quick. Uh, not, not to cut yep. you off, but let, let me ask you a yep. question before you finish your thought. Uh, yep. Here in the States, we got the federal more, you know, the FMCSA, uh, that, you know, that provide rules and regulations for us truck drivers to live by. What do you yep. guys have up there in Canada? Well, we have that too. Because to, to, we have a reciprocity agreement with the state. So any Canadian driver or any Mexican driver, for that matter, who is going to come in and do business in the States, going to drive truck in the States, has to follow those. So we also have to go do our, our drug testing. Like, if you're going to drive truck only in Canada, you don't necessarily have to get a drug test unless the company has a employment drug test policy. But not all companies do. If you're just going to drive truck in Canada, you can, if the company is okay with it, you can smoke pot because you're not crossing into the States. Um, and in Canada, you, because of the way it's, uh, don't quote me on the way I'm going to say this, but. Uh, like I know a lot of drivers up here who smoke pot, but they only run in Canada because marijuana is legal in Canada. But if you want to run in the States and most companies are looking for us drivers, um, you will have to go get a pre or pre-employment or a drug test to prove to like the clearinghouse and all that, that you are, that you're clean. Because if you get pulled over in the States, if you get an accident in the States, you know, they're going to, they're going to test you, right? So we do apply, we do follow uh, your, your rules more than we even kind of follow our rules. We, we really are sort of subservient to the American system if you're going to be a, a Canadian driver working in the U.S. And again, to be honest, I don't know if you saw that stuff we had going on there with our Freedom Rally and all that stuff. And, uh, they made it so that if you're not vaccinated, you can't cross the stage, you can't come back, and blah, blah, blah. Like, if, you, if you're a Canadian driver and you don't want to run U.S., you're going to have a hard time finding work. Like, it's, it's still out there, but, you know, like, you ain't going to be doing any OTR too much because, like, everything in Canada is coming down, down, down to the U.S. So we really are on your system more than we're on our system. All right. That's that what's up. Question? Yeah, that's what's up. All right, go ahead. Continue uh, continue uh, the experience at Seafood Express. All right. So, uh I guess, you know, it is to say that there is a bit of a driver shortage up here in Canada. I know that people sort of some people say that that's kind of not true but this particular company and this particular province in canada because it's like it really is just a tiny little island they uh they have resulted in they're they've turned to importing a lot of drivers most of their drivers like i joked with them i said i'm like your only canadian driver they bring guys over from england from germany from russia from india China, a lot of Jamaican cats are working for them, and uh, this is how they get drivers, right? They find people who are, they find them on Facebook, they find them wherever, they say, come over, and they help them with the whole immigration process, right? Because Canada, had, the government here has acknowledged that young Canadians don't want to drive truck, and uh, if we're going to keep the industry going, that they need to find drivers from wherever else, so they actively search for people overseas. So I get into class, and it's only me and one other guy. So it's just going to be the 
the two of us. And he's a young cat, good guy. Uh, he came from England, and uh, he came over, I guess, to work for some other company there, but it didn't work out. He found this company, and uh, they said, okay, we're going to help you do your LMI, which is part of the immigration process. So we're, we get there on the first day of class, and they're kind of mostly talking to him because he's still got some paperwork issues. You know, I mean, it's, I'm sure you can imagine, you understand, it's a lot of paperwork to like immigrate to a country. Uh, you get over here, they give you basically a two year work visa. And after that two years, if, uh, you know, you're still employed for the purpose of why you came to this country, then they will give you citizenship. And after that two years, you can go do whatever you want. And that's kind of a big problem with the industry here, too, is that a lot of companies are so for the companies is that they kind of own your ass for two years. Mm. But after that two years, when the driver gets his citizenship, he quits and goes and finds a better job somewhere else. And some even get out of the industry altogether. Though, once that two years is up and you got your papers, then you can go work at, do whatever you want to do. You don't have to be a truck driver no more if you don't want. But for that first two years, you're kind of, uh, I don't want to say owned, but you are definitely beholden to that company that helped you through the immigration process. All right, quick and question. These companies, they, quick question yeah. about that. All right, so you say they, they pull in drivers for from damn near all over the world. Are the dri- are the drivers that's coming in, uh, that's going through the 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 visa process, the you know for the work visa for the two years, are they still coming over up under the up under their CDLs that they already have, or when they get over to Canada and say like after six months or maybe after a year, do they got to switch over to uh? Uh, a Canada or you know, or state license or something like that. No, that's a good question. No, they have to before they can work. They have to switch their license. So, so in this particular case, this driver, this other guy who was in my class, uh, he uh, he came over from England. He was a young cat. He was in the army. Then he got out and he started driving truck in England. So he had a commercial driver's license from England. And, uh, but that doesn't count over here. You have to go and you have to retest. And, uh, he was driving tanker or something over there, but you gotta run, like, it's a whole different ball game, right? Like their trucks are all cab over. And the longest they haul in England is a 43 foot trailer. Cause you just can't fit anything else around. So they kind of like companies over here will want to do a little bit of training with you. Make sure you can handle our system. Plus, uh, they took him out. The, the first company that actually brought him over, which was a different company, they took him out and put him in like a 13 speed standard and like, you know, he never, I don't think he's ever even driven a standard before. Right. So, uh, that didn't work out and they kind of had some attitude problems, whatever. So he like walked away from them and then he came and found Seafood Express and that's how, you know, we got to meet in the orientation. So <clears throat> we get up there and, uh, day one, we go in it's just kind of a, a meet and greet and they, they give us like, you know, some books and, they explain what they're all about, and uh, they ask us some questions. And uh, the uh, the head of compliance guy, he kind of is like the guy. He's on their videos. He's the one who shows you how to do like a pre trip on YouTube, or whatever. He's kind of a he's a good guy, but he's kind of like rough and gruff kind of guy. And he kind of started like you know interrogating the Englishman, like why are you, uh, why didn't it work out for you over at the other company? You know why are you here? What's the problem? Blah blah blah. And I'm just kind of sitting there watching this, like okay, whatever, right? And, uh, you know, he, the guy answers the questions honestly, and they're like, okay. So they kind of, like I said, they sort of had to deal with him a lot because there was a lot of immigration stuff they had to do with him still, and it involved even, like, going to the border. Like, they have this thing in Canada where um, you actually have to, you have to drive to the U.S. border. Literally, it's called going around the flagpole and then come back. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but that's, you know, that's how it works, and, so then you go in and you show them your paperwork and you show them this is my letter from the company and this is my passport and all that. So they're like, well, something didn't work out. Your paperwork was wrong. We have to correct it. On day two of orientation, you got to like drive back to the border of uh, Calais. So he had to go to like the border of New Brunswick and Maine and do all his paperwork again and come back. So that they said to me, okay, buddy, on day two, you're going to just be you in class and we're not going to get uh, too much done because we want to kind of keep you guys at the same the same speed of orientation. So we're like, okay, whatever, right? Like, they're telling me to be there. Well, I'm not going to say too much, you know, like, obviously, you know, it'd be better to 
be getting money, getting on with things, like get out and get making money in the industry, but right. fine, whatever. So he, he goes off and does that, and uh, day two, we kind of just sat there, you know, took like two hour lunch, and didn't really get much going on. Uh, he comes back, you know, day two, we're, we're in class. Anyways, to make a long story short, we kind of, uh, on day two, I actually kind of went out in the camp. So it was just so we can sort of establish where things were going with our training program. Out of the two weeks that I was there on an orientation, I spent five hours driving truck. The rest of it, I was all in classroom. And, uh, you know, I mean, like, it was okay, I guess. You know, a lot of it was like, I'd already been to check school. I already had my license. Um, but, you know, like, this is the way they want to run the program. So, you know what I mean? So you're paying me, so I'm going to sit here and listen to it. Uh, you you say you're going to milk that. I guess, but, you know, at the same time, like, you know, I'm over there living in a hotel, you know what I mean? And, uh, it wasn't what it is, you know? It's like a little bit, the thing is, it's like, even though it's like only an hour and a half drive from my home, to go to this island, it costs 50 bucks to cross the bridge. So it's not like I could just be booting home every time I want, because that's 50 bucks. So, you know, I was kind of stuck there, you know? So anyways, uh, we get going back in the last couple of days. Now they have to book the, uh, the road test for this guy. If he has to go and he has to switch his license over and he's going to become a citizen on Prince Edward Island and he's got to get a Prince Edward Island driver's license. So they do that. That's like, that's on like day four of orientation. So here we have another day where I'm just kind of like sitting around the class by myself and like twiddling my thumbs and, you know, we talk a little bit about this, we talk a little bit about that, and, you know, that's about it, right? They're like, once again, we don't want you to get too far. And the other guy, but he's got to go do his road test. So they took him out in their truck, and uh, that was like a whole other process. I had to laugh my ass off at that band because they get Prince Edward Island. Because of COVID, they, you go out, you take the company truck, you have your driver instructor from the company with you. And because of COVID, the examiner will not even get in the truck, so they put a camera in the truck. And uh, you go off, and uh, the guy's on a walkie-talkie, apparently telling you, like, go left, go right, do this, right? And then you drive around for a little bit, and they come back, and the, the driver examiner from the province uh, looks at the video and says, okay, you passed, right? You you and know I'm what? Like laughing. I, 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 I seen videos like that of, of an examiner... You know, be, because of COVID, they they have a a camera system set up, like it's on like a remote type deal. They can they can like you know move the camera from where they at, like a like a you know like a remote control car or some shit like that. But yep. how is I don't know I I, I I I mean you know I guess I you know I guess I guess I would feel a lot comfortable because I wouldn't have somebody in there just watching and critiquing and all like that. But still a camera though. I mean, the human interaction well, is like out the window at this point. Well, you know, I thought it was a joke to be honest. And I, I was like calling all my buddies from CDL school saying like, ha, you still see what they do. I, mean, I did my license test in, in the province of Nova Scotia. And right in, like, uh, you know, across the, from Halifax, you know, which is the biggest city in their day. And it was no joke, man. Like, it was hard. You know, it was, like, probably one of the hardest things I did in my life. On top of doing your tree trip and your backing, and then you go out on the road test, and you could only do a certain amount of things wrong. They give you a point for everything you do wrong. And once you hit, like, 37 points, you fail, right? And some things are um, a critical fail. Like, you could do certain things, like, you go one kilometer over the speed limit, Automatic fail, take the truck back. Yeah, it, um, it's almost like what they do over here for our CDL uh, road and test. And I had two people on my road test. I had two examiners because they were training another examiner. So I had two examiners in the truck. We're all masked up. So you're driving around. You're sweating because you're nervous. You got the mask on and you're like, oh my God, am I going to get through this? And I'm like, I'm, just little things. Like, I, I, uh, I blew a shift going like from high range to low range. And she caught that, right? Because she's right there on you in the front. And I'm saying, and I was saying that to the, the guys at the I'm like, man, that camera ain't going to catch you if, if you like blow a shift because the camera's pointed at like you in the road. It don't see what you're doing for the gears. But the funny thing was this company, all their trucks are automatic. So he went and did his road test in an automatic. 
And uh, I don't know how things work in the States, but up here in Canada, that if you do your road test with an automatic, you get something called like a class 43 exemption. Yeah, we, we, you yeah. are not. Yeah, same thing over yeah. here. It, it'll be a restriction, uh, automatic restriction yeah. on your license. Sorry, I guess we lost you there. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's a it's an automatic, a automatic restriction on your license if you if you drive a if you test out in an automatic. And yeah, and most companies don't like that over here because if you like, it's fine. Like their whole fleet might be automatic for the most part, but if you're down in the stage or something, you break down, and they want to get you like a rider truck or a Penske truck. They might bring you a standard and say, well, we need you just to get your ass home right, and, you know, this is what we're going to give you. But, you know, it is what it is, and that's what you can back with. So, anyways, that's not really, uh, you know, part of the problem. Uh -oh. think I lost you again. Hold on. All right, there we go. I think I lost you again. Hold on. Let me let me call you back from uh my, my, my other number. Hold on, hold on real quick. There we go. Let's see. There, there we go. Nope. Okay, yeah, I lost you from my other number. So I called you back from this number. Hopefully this will work out. All right, go ahead, continue. All right, cool. Okay, so you know, this will go for like week one of orientation with them kind of mostly dealing with the product with his immigration with him, his license with books and all that so you know it's like whatever you know what I mean that's cool about it I'm getting paid and uh, you know they come in in the morning and uh, there's two cats who are training us there's the, like the head of compliance guy he's like he's kind of like the big boss to a certain degree and uh, he's sort of he's off and on he's back and forth you know in his office doing other things and there's this other guy he's also from England and he's sort of the head jagger trainer. So him and the other English guy, they're getting along just like, oh, like they're very awesome together, right? They're talking about England and talking about this and that and everything. And, uh, you know, after everything finally gets settled down a little bit and we're spending more time in class, you know, they come in. And like the first hour of every morning, they've been talking like this. This young English guy, the other student, he, he's living in a different motel. And there's a bar across the road. And he's like picked up some Canadian girl and he's banging her. And they spent literally the first hour of class every morning be like, yeah, yeah, so how was the last night? What did you with the girl do? And go to parties and you were like banging her, hanging out with your friends. And I'm sitting here going like, okay, you know, like, now it's starting to get boring, right? Because it's like every day, this is how we start orientation by like listening to like this guy's life story about like him and, him and his sexual exploits at the hotel and all that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right. So I started kind of making jokes right about it like, you know, like, uh, like, man, it's like coordination here every day when I come to school, you know, we're just life of times that these guys hanging out, right? You know, and it was funny and whatever. It wasn't taken too serious. So, uh, we get into the second week and we're about halfway through the second week of orientation and they, it's just the same, same shit, you know, like we're spending more time just like joking around with like, you know, this guy's social life outside of uh, trucking school or not even trucking school. It's supposed to be orientation, and like I told you, in the first, like, the whole time I was there, I spent five hours actually driving the truck. And I already got my life. Wait. So, like, you know what I mean? All this stuff we were doing, like, going over hours of service and going over how to run a reefer and going over, like, it's all useful and everything, but it was a lot of it was, you know, repeat, right? Wait. And, uh. Wait, wait. So, the first week is done. So, how long is orientation all together? What, two weeks? Well, they said two weeks, and now I'm starting to like ask some more questions, right? Because we're now like halfway through week two, and we're still doing classroom stuff, and I'm like, oh, okay. So, 
Um, you know, I was like, they're like, well, you can go home next weekend if you want, but like, just so happened, like on both of the weekends when, you know, we were off orientation, there was like huge snowstorms. And sometimes they close the bridge. Like, especially they'll close the bridge to high sided vehicles. And they're like, yeah, just stay in the motel, you know, because like, if the wind is going to be too dangerous and, you know, you know, we'll pay for that. No problem, right? So I just stayed over and, but I'm like, listen, I'm like, so what's next week going to hold for us? Are we, are we going to be getting in the stuff a little bit? So they said, yeah. And I'm like, so week three, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do some more training in the truck. Week three. And then uh, if, if we feel, if we feel comfortable, we'll send you up to one of our customers to like uh, pick up some trailers and bring them back to our yard and stuff like that. And then we're like, and then in week four, week if four. you feel comfortable with you, yeah, week four, bro. Like, this isn't even like, you know, and you got to understand too, like, this isn't like, you know, swift, swift, you know, driver training. Like, I've already got my license. I've already been hey. driving truck. Yeah. They said in week four, what we're going to do, what they'll do is they send you out on a run down to like the New Jersey or whatever, where they do a lot of business. And we'll have another driver shadow you right so you like will go out with two trucks and the other driver and you guys will go to the same location and he'll just kind of observe you on the road and then report back and i'm like okay that's cool because at least now you're making some miles right you're getting out there but that's like week four so we're still like in like into the middle of week two now and we're still in the classroom and like it's just like a lot of goofing around like you know watching these videos and the instructors disappear and you know, come back a couple hours, well, an hour later or whatever. We're just, me and the other guy, the other student, we're just sitting there like, you know, he's got his feet up on the desk and his shoes off, and, which I was kind of like, dude, like, you're not in your mom's living room here. Like, you know, man, put, put your damn shoes back on, you know? <laughs> but uh, he's all chilled out and everything, and, you know, we're talking about his sex life and everything. So uh, one day we're talking about hours of service, and we're talking about U.S. border customs or crossing policies. Now, I've done a lot of that in a previous job. Before I got my CDL, well, I was waiting for my road test because everything got shut down up there due to COVID. I was working as like a hotshot driver for a guy. I was running from Nova Scotia down to Indiana and I was bringing back RVs. And uh, I was crossing the border like all the time. Like I'd, I'd go down to Indiana and I'd stack up an RV and I'd bring it back and drop it in uh, Sarnia, Ontario. And go right back to Indiana. I'd, I'd be down there for like ten to fifteen days sometimes, just bringing bringing RVs across to the yard. And then on my final trip, I'd get a big one, like a forty feet foot personal RV, and I'd bring it all the way back there. So I, I was doing a lot of border crossing, so I knew the procedures. And we were talking about all the paperwork and all the stuff for border crossing. And the English driving instructor kind of gets into this disagreement with you. Right? We're talking about the questions that they ask you when you cross the border. And I said, well, okay. He says, well, when you cross back into Canada as a Canadian, the first thing they're going to ask you is, how long have you been in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. And you told them. And uh, I said, you know, they ask you that. And I, I brought it up to him. I said, what's the word of the problem there? I said, they ask you that just to tell whether or not you're lying to them. They know exactly how long you've been in the U.S. because when you cross over into the U.S., all that information is recorded on the computers. Like, these guys do everything at the border, man. Like, since 9 11, when Homeland Security took over your border, mm -hmm. these guys don't miss a thing. They are on top of it, right? All the information that they take from you is shared between U.S. Customs and Canada Customs. And when you go across either way, they might ask you a lot of questions, but they already know the answer. We just see this in my answer. And I've seen a lot of cats pull them under the rigs and put the handcuffs. Well, sitting at the border because they didn't, uh, they had to lie about something or they shouldn't be there because they got a criminal record or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the English guy says to me, no, no, no. He's like, that's not true, man, because they don't know how long you've been in the States. I'm like, yeah, but they know. When you cross the U.S. border, your license plate is scanned. It goes into the system. Canada Customs knows exactly when you cross. So when you cross back, you say, Yo, you know, I, you know, I crossed Saturday at lunchtime. I've been gone three days. They're like, okay, you're telling me the truth. Have a nice day, sir. They don't say that to you, but they just know that you're not, you know, you're not lying to them. So he's like, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. He goes, you know what, kid? He's like, I bet you a hundred bucks that that's not true. So I'm like, okay, I'll take that bet. So that day I go back to the hotel. I go on the, the customer border protection website. Boom. 
They said it right in black and white that they have an agreement with U.S. Customs, blah, blah, blah. So I emailed it to the cat. I'm like, you know what, brother? This is too simple. Keep your 100 bucks. I'm like, but just know that, like, I know what I'm talking about, right? So now he's, he, he comes back. He's got attitude with me. Bro, I'm, 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 I'm okay, still... I'm like, I'm still tripping on the fact that you got to do orientation for four weeks. Yeah, man. And this is <laughs> and, and this is and and this is you as as a driver that already have his CDL. Yep. I mean, this I yep. you would think that this would be for like drivers that didn't have their CDLs or that didn't have the well, driving experience, right? right? Right, that didn't have the driving experience, but. Jeez, four weeks, man. That's so, uh, Chris. Man, did you? So, did you get on with the company after <laughs> afterwards, or you just yep. you you just said, "Yo, this I'm I'm good." I mean, and also, no, did they still? Did they still? You know, did they still pay you for? For the duration you was there, and how much did they pay you, and was it worth it? Okay, well, the pay for the orientation was twenty bucks an hour, mm -hmm. uh, so which is it was it's pretty good, you know. They pay you for the time you're in class, and uh, they pay for the motel while you're up there, and that's it. They don't give you like any like pretty and food or anything, but that's fine. Uh, so, no, I didn't, didn't. Well, here's kind of where we're getting to the story. So it's like the Thursday or something of the second week. And, you know, now Buddy's kind of, the one guy's kind of a little pissed at me because he lost the bet, but I'm like, don't worry about it, keep your money. And uh, we're sitting in class, and the other, the, the other student, he's on his phone, right? And he's like, since this guy's like ex-military, he hardly has any hair, but he's been going on all week, like, man, I gotta get a haircut, gotta get a haircut. So he's on his phone, and he's calling around in class, to different barbershop. And like, and like everything, I, this is just so different up here in Canada, like, I love you know, while I was doing that hot shot and stuff, I crossed in the States, then he took the mask off, nobody said this shit. It was awesome. Up here in Canada, everybody's like super paranoid, and you know, they're a mask everywhere. You got a book appointment to get a haircut because they can only have like one dude in the store at one time. So he can't get a haircut appointment nowhere, right? And he's like all like stressed out about it. So he finally finds some guy in town who's going to do his haircut, but he can do it at like 2 30 gaskets. So he says to the teachers at the, the orientation, he's like, do you mind if I, like, uh, you know, leave school here and, like, take my lunch time? Instead of, like, we take our lunch at, like, 11.30 in the morning or whatever. Can I, like, go do my lunch break at, like, a later point and uh, go get my hair cut? And uh, he says it to his English buddy there, the, uh, the inspector. And he's like, oh, yeah, no problem, right? Like, we'll work that out for you. And I'm like, so uh, what are we gonna? How are we gonna work that? We have to like, I'll take our lunch later, or we're just gonna like cut the day short because this guy wants to get a haircut. I'm like, what are we doing here? I'm like, I'm over here like, you know, like taking time away from my life to get like a job with you guys driving truck, and now we're like stopping the class to like go get this this guy get a haircut. Like you can't you can't do it after school. Like, right. well, what is this, right? What they got to do with, they, like, what they got to do with you guys? That's that's crazy. And they're like, what's your problem? And I'm like, well, I just say it like, you know, we get here at like 7 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you know, it's nice to like have our lunch break at like 1130 or noon. Now we want to like make our lunch break at 2.30 in the afternoon so this guy can go get a haircut. Like, what are we here for? To accommodate his life or for the company to get some new drivers on the road? They're like, oh, okay. So, anyways, they said, you know what? This is like, I don't know, like 11.30 in the morning. They're like, you guys can just go go, go, go home now. Like what? They're like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to have this kind of disruption. You can just take the day off now, and Paul can go get his haircut, and you can go back wow. to the hotel and do whatever. Like, okay. So they like, okay. So, so like, you say the instructor? You say the instructor got mad at you for the, for that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because my expectations were going to like be a professional atmosphere here, where like if you say that like you come to school from like seven a.m. till three p.m. and you have your lunch break, that's what I'm there for. Let's right. get this paper with this way, get this book learning out of the you, way. You there Here's to the get steps. right, you there to get a job, bro. You ain't there to you you there to get a job, you to start making money and all like that. Not not worried about somebody's getting their damn haircut. What the hell? That's what I'm saying. On top of listening to this guy's sex stories every morning and wow. you know, like 
this whole project is locked down, you know. It, like, I was technically, when I got there, I was on what's called a work quarantine. Even though I didn't have no COVID, I passed all my tests. When you come onto this province, because they are so paranoid there, you are on a work quarantine. You are allowed to go from the motel to the workplace or to your orientation and then back to the motel. And technically, legally, you're only allowed to do that for the first four days. And they give you a couple uh, rapid tests to do while you're in the motel. And as long as you're not the tester, you know, you come up with no COVID, then after day four, you can do it. Again, this guy is out in the bar every day, you know. I was just getting sick of it, man. I was like, you know, like, it, it wasn't like, you know, there was a big class right there. I realized it was just too much, but like, you know, like, well, this guy just doing whatever he wants. And now I'm losing money because this, you know, because I got, I just disagreed with the fact that this guy's going to change our classroom hours about his haircut schedule. And they're like, well, no, we're not going to have any of that. So you both just go home now. So now I'm only getting paid for like three hours of today instead of getting like a seven or eight hour pay because mm-hmm. buddy's haircut. So wow. anyway, we come in the next day. No big deal. You know, I'm, we let it go. And uh, I didn't even say anything to buddy about his haircut. I was kind of the disagreement was between me and the, uh, the instructors about like, they, they just like letting this happen. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it kind of got brought up again. And uh, the one examiner started yelling at the English guy who was the stuff starts kind of yelling at me about it. That's like, you know, I, I said, listen, bro, like, I didn't come here for this. I came here to get the orientation done, get out of the truck, start making money, not to be sitting around listening to worry about this guy's life stories and this and that. I've already put up a couple days of doing nothing so you can handle his immigration. Now I'm taking time out of my life to wait because he wants to get haircuts. And uh, he's like, He's like telling me to like shut up, right? And I'm like, no, man. If you're gonna yell at me, you're gonna get it back. I don't care. Like you're not. We're not in high school. Dude. We're both adults. You know what I mean? You want to talk down to me? I'm gonna talk back to you like that. I gotta tell you how it is too, right? So whatever. That was like like a five second little kind of like we had a few words about it, and then we dropped it and we carried back on with class that day. Next day we uh, we go and we get our, our uniforms, all of our PPE, our hard helmets, our glasses, or they give us little bags. They give us all kinds of swag and all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And this was on the Friday. And, uh, like, I think you asked me to be before, like, you know, you know, you're paying us the money. And I'll tell yeah, here's the point I want to make. So they, they give us all these employment contracts, right? Like, they take it all of our ID and, like, you know, the passport. And they got all your documents photocopied. And they've you've signed your contract to work for them and all that. Mm-hmm. And there's, like, all these deductions and all that, right? Like, we still have to go do our drug test. That's ninety dollars, and we got to pay for it. Uh, they mm-hmm. gave me a key to a yard that they have in Moncton, New Brunswick, which is kind of where I'd be working out of. Mm-hmm. Uh, another hundred dollars for the key, right? They give you a key to a mailbox at, at the corporate head office, so that as an OTR driver, when you uh, get in the neighborhood, you can check and get your pay stubs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Hundred dollars deposit for that. Mm-hmm. So when you finally get your first paycheck. There's like hundred dollar holes for this, hundred dollar holes for that, hundred dollar holes for this. Mm. <laughs> it's just like seriously, I'm like, there's like there's no money left here because it's all taken in like deposits for stuff, right? So how much? How, so, how, how, how much was your first paycheck? Three hundred bucks. Wow. For so that's like and that was so gotta get like, more money too, right? Full, full <laughs> light, full full light. What two three? Two three weeks so far four four weeks. No, no it was a week and week and a half. Oh, only there week. two weeks. Oh, okay, okay. So that's like that's like a hundred and fifty dollars a week. That's uh, <laughs> so you get so you, so you got you guys got paid what every every week or every two weeks? Every two weeks, I tell you. It, oh my God! No, I couldn't. No, I couldn't do yeah. that. So did you, so? What was it? so? Chris, man, what 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 was the outcome? You 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 stayed there for a couple of weeks. They did you ever get a chance to do a low for them, or you just said, "Yo, I'm I'm out." No, the uh, the outcome was that you know after they gave us all of our uh, PPE and all this stuff and you know whatever and. I was on a Friday, and I went back to the motel and you know, chilled out for the weekend and watched the NFL. And came back on Monday, ready to go, and figured Monday we're actually supposed to get back out in the truck. So, you know, we're all sitting there. we got our uh, safety vests on and ready to rock and roll. And uh, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And there was no beef between me and uh, the other student. I was like, I was just making a point about, you know, the fact that I'm an adult. I'm here to, to job, right? This is high school. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought all that was like, you know, behind us. And uh, the big boss comes into the classroom with well, a little compliance guy. He's like, hey, come watch this in there. I'm like, okay. So we go in his office and there's another cat in there. It turns out to be the general manager. And he's like, so uh, we understand that, you know, uh, this happened. So there, was a, there was an argument. I was like, uh, what do you mean there was an argument? He's like, well, you had an argument with, uh, you know, the one instructor about this. And I was like, well, I don't really think it was an argument. I was just, you know, this is the situation that happened. You know, they wanted to cut school early or change things around so buddy could go get a haircut. And I felt that, like, since, like, there's only two of us in the class, and because, you know, he's going to go get a haircut, that means you guys don't want to teach me nothing because you don't want to have me get a get ahead of him, and then you have to re him. I just thought it was inappropriate that you let this guy take care of his personal needs right. on company time. Right. And uh, I already went to you about that, and you had a conversation with me about that last week, and you actually told me you agreed with me. And now I'm in your office, and you guys are bringing it to me in a negative manner, saying that you know you think that I'm disruptive and I'm not the type of person you want to work there. So anyways, to make a long story short, like in that meeting in his office, they said, well, we feel that, you know, because of the way you dealt with that situation, uh, you know, that uh, you're not going to be a good fit here. And uh, we're going to we're going to part ways with you. Wow. And I'm like, you kidding me? I'm like, I'm like, two days ago, you're telling me that you agree with me because like adults, you know, who go to their job, don't do that kind of stuff. You, you take care of your own business on your own time. And now you're telling me that uh, it was disrespectful of me to, uh, to have a problem with that. So I was like, whatever, man. Uh, you know, here's all your stuff back. So I had to go back, packed all my stuff up at the motel, had to get all their crap that they gave me. They gave you a little duffel bag, not even like, more like a, you know, a personal hygiene bag. They give you one of those two and they give you like little like stress balls and all kinds of crap. I had to get all that, bring it back to them, bring it back to the, with their key and all that. I dropped that off at the dispatch office because they got like a whole whack of my money on hold. Mm-hmm. And every little thing that's in that bag, if they're going to just go counter through it, and if one little thing ain't there, they're taking your money. And I don't want any of their junk, right? Mm-hmm. So I take that back and give it to them. I fire off an email to them. Like, you know, then I go home, pay 50 bucks, drive across that bridge, go home, and uh, I, you know, I send them an email. I say, you know, I've dropped off your, uh, your equipment. Please confirm that you got everything you needed so that there's not going to be any problems with me getting the rest of my pay for the orientation. He says, well, I got the bag. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to take a look at it yet. I'm like, okay, well. At least they were confirming something. And uh, then it took, wow. uh, because nice. of that, then it took, they, then they they played the game, right? Like a lot of trucking companies do. Now that we don't want to or whatever, mm-hmm. we're going to stretch out you getting your money, sir. Mm-hmm. And uh, it took like 45 days. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I harped on them hard, man. You know, I was like all over them. Where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? You know, and that, that's what you kind of got to do. And uh, after 45 days, I finally got the rest of it. Wow, man! Seafood Express, man. That's. But let me tell you, bro. Let me tell you the underlying secret to what's going on here was that during those like two weeks I was there, mm-hmm. I would watch divers come up. Right, like I told you, they got divers from Jamaica, they got divers from all over the place, and I would watch this head of compliance guy go up and uh, have a chit chat with him. Right, and he was he was like a tough gun on them. Right, like and he'd come back and he'd kind of tell us what he was. To those drivers, like this one driver, you know, he, he don't like to drive at night too much. And Buddy would go up there and he'd be like, you know, you got to start driving more at night. The driver's like, well, I'm tired at night. I like to get my hours in during the day. And like, I don't disagree with that. You're going to be an OCR driver, you do have to drive at night. But they were just kind of like, they like to bring these drivers over to Canada, put them on the immigration system where they basically like own your ass for two years, and then they bully them. Because some of the stuff that I was, you know, I heard him saying, like, you would not get away with saying that to like a driver who is like uh, you know a citizen of that country and be like, "Yo, man, like you, know, you keep talking to me like that, I'm just going to walk across the road, get a, a job in a different carrier." You know, you keep that up. They do this stuff on purpose. Like they bring these guys over and they make you like they owe you owe them. You want to like start a, a new life in Canada? You know that's fine. You want to be a truck driver and make your you know whatever they promise you, your sixty thousand dollars a year. You know, uh, you owe us now because we're, we're we're making that happen for you. So you know, you better you better do what they want. Like you know, they these guys are. It was kind of 
I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Watching the way that they talk to some of the drivers, you know, wow. they, they, that's what they want. And they knew that they weren't, I guess they figured they weren't going to get that to me because I wasn't uh, an immigration case. You know, I was a guy who's was born here, so I didn't need to, like, put up with their bullshit. And it wasn't like, I didn't really think that the whole haircut thing was a lot of bullshit, but I guess to them, I showed them that uh, this guy's uh this guy's a problem child or something. <laughs> So bad. So now that was your experience with with them. Would you would you still suggest them as a as 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 a place to go to? Yeah. Uh, well, you know it's funny actually because I was on a Facebook group for truckers that I met some guys who was also in England, and I was saying to them that you know, yeah, like if you want to get over here, because this guy is from stuck in the UK. And he definitely wants to come over here. And I was saying, yeah, you know, they'll, they'll get you over here and they'll take care of all the paperwork. So from that perspective, I guess, yeah. Um, you know, the money is on average with a lot of other companies, you know what I mean, for, for drivers. But um, I don't know. I think one of the things is that they, if you, like, and I'm sure there's a lot of companies in the States that are like this too. Like, they, if you want to be, like, monitored, like 24 seven and like have every little thing that you do, like brought to your attention, like, you know, the way you run your hours, the way, like they got to, they got their call comms all set up so that like, you can't even like move down or like, you gotta get it. Like, you know, they want like a full half an hour pre-trip out of you in the morning, which is good. You know I mean? You're, you're making sure your vehicle's safe. You gotta get up and you gotta like pre-trip the, uh, the reefer engine itself. Even if you're not like a mechanical guy, they say that to you like, I'm like, you know, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Like, I don't know anything about reefer motors. They're like, don't worry about it. Just be looking around and, you know, open it up and check for leaks and stuff like that. You got to check and do that. So they got to spend a lot of time. And then you got to do a proper post trip every night. And uh, you have to enter all this stuff in the call time. So if you're like a guy who's all about that and want to do things right, I, I suppose that's a, I'm not going to say they're a bad company that way. They, they're doing things right. They, they do have good equipment. They put, good tires on the equipment, so they do run safe, I will say that about them, but uh, you know, I just think that they, uh, when it comes to the way they handle the, the people side of things, that's where, you know, they want to they want to have you sort of under their control with a little extra not just, you know, most companies, they got you because you want the paycheck. These guys, they got you because if you uh, if you become a problem, they can yank your immigration and send you home. Well, Chris, man, thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for coming on and uh, giving us uh, your testimony on uh, on uh, damn it, man, on Seafood Express, man. <laughs> Woo. I gotta yeah. ask you a question, though, like, I was I was very surprised when I saw that you had called that, man. That was one of the conversations we had. Somebody must have tipped you off to these guys or something because, like, how did you ever find out about this? This little company up in Prince Edward Island, Canada. I, you know, I, 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 at the end of the, you know, at the end of every, well, not every episode, but you know, in the comments and in my uh, community posts, I, I ask, you know, the people to give me suggestions of companies to call, and one of my, one of my subscribers, uh, viewers, uh, sort of mentioned Seafood Express and. You know, I thought, you know, I, I didn't know nothing about it. You know, he sent me the, you know, the information and I did my research and come to find out it was a Canada based company. And I was like, oh, OK, this might be an interesting, uh, interesting one to talk to. So, yeah, it turned out to be, you know, a very interesting one and very much more interesting of, you know, somebody that actually had experience uh with the with the hiring process so again thank you very much for for coming in and uh sharing your experience and your testimony with them man thank you oh it's my pleasure i appreciate you keep up what you're doing you know it's uh, it's you know, not only is it uh you know awesome to listen to sometimes but it is a you're providing a an excellent service for drivers out there you know what i mean you're doing all the research for them you know so I I appreciate it's a, it's a win -win, man. I'm also appreciative more that somebody from Canada is is listening to me. So bro, next time uh we'll get on next time again we'll get on. Maybe we'll talk about some uh 
some of the difference between Canada and uh, American driving. So let's do that in the future. I love driving down there, man. I love flying J's. You know what I mean? I love that. Uh, we, we ain't set up here for tough drivers. And I'm like, we are, but tough stops in this country are terrible. We do have a few hold, flying J's. Hold, 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 on, know, hold, that, thought, hold, hold that thought. Let's, let's save that for another conversation. <laughs> all right, brother. All right. All right. So we'll get back together, we'll, we'll man. Show. Hey, you definitely stay safe out there, man. And, and thank you very much, man. I do appreciate you. All right, man. All right. Go Browns. Holler at you later. Oh, for sure, go Browns. Okay. Holler at you later. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, class kids, it went pop. Death to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales, it won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, could bars, you got pops. Urge right into Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom to me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rump, bump, bump. Y'all fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.